Michael, first, let me tell you, I'm so sorry for your loss. And thank you for talking to me about Oh, I'm like, I get so emotional because I see your picture and I see the hopes that any parent would have. But you are a parent who chose this child to be a part of your life. You adopted him or were, you were in the process of adopting him. I think he chose me ah. um, to be to be fair. Um, you know, I at the end of I have two biological children from a previous marriage. And at the end of that marriage, uh, I met his older sister, Camille, who um, a, a friend of mine kind of said she needs some support and guidance and mentorship. And we kind of took her into our home. You see my younger daughter, Isabel, there. And we became this family unit. And she came to me and said, um, I've never had a dad. Would you be my dad? And um, I had to talk to my two kids, you know, my, my son Aaron and my daughter and see that that was okay with them and make sure they understood. And then I had to have the conversation with Camille of, you know, do you understand what that means? And I'm gonna have high expectations for you and it means family rules and, and me being there. And sometimes I'm gonna say things you don't like and sometimes you're gonna say things I don't like. You were like, going to parent, you were offering that. a yeah, yeah. parent. You, you were doing what parents do, offering structure. Larry was in foster care when you met him. He was about to age out of the system. And we know that for many kids about to age out, this is their last hope. So here you come in and you're offering just what you said, the structure, the parenting. When did you first learn that Larry was struggling with drug abuse? Well, it wasn't so much a struggle for him. Um, mm. You know, people try things, I think, over time. That wasn't really an issue overall. Um, he moved to a house in transition after living with his sister for a little while and he tried uh, drugs that turned out to be bad drugs that multiple people um, had a very serious reaction. I mean, you, you're a mom. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you know, um, when you look at Moses, you, I, every day you see the positive and you see the, the potential. And so, in my case, I feel like I came to Larry maybe later than I wish I could. Oh. And I think for parents, you know, you wish you had more time. Um, and you don't always get the time that you want. Yeah. And so it's this combination of trying to find a way to help my kids grieve and go through that process and to model positive behavior. And a couple years ago, I probably would have never shared this, to be honest with you. Mm. But if it can, one other person can relate, if it can help you talk to your kids in some way, if it opens up a dialogue where you just listen, because I think the trauma that lies underneath, and I think we, you just did an interview where you're talking about mental health. Mm -hmm. The really important part is that you're brave enough to admit when you struggle yeah. and that you need help or that you aren't strong. And, you know, with yeah. COVID-19 and all the changes in this world, People are struggling. As a parent, what is your advice? What have you learned? Well, I think, you know, communication. You know, I've always been a big advocate for communication and being honest about the pain or the, the things that you go through. Um, I think it's important for me to model not just then, but now with my kids, how to grieve, how to find positives, how to keep his memory alive. You know, my oldest daughter, Camille, is a writer director oh. and so she wants to tackle some of the issues she sees in the foster system and some of the places she felt like it, it didn't really fit larry and some of these messages so it's my job to empower her and support her and help her share her message well, I love that because she has a great role model in her dad and you. I, I want to also congratulate you. You're directing an episode, an upcoming episode of The Connors, at keeping your focus while also supporting your daughter and your children through there. It's, it's, I just commend it top to bottom. The Halloween episode is a dream come true. I think you said something like you posted, time to let my voice be heard. And you're doing that both personally and professionally. DJ's all grown up and he's a great guy. <laughs> How does it well, feel? <laughs> it, it's amazing. You know, coming full circle, getting to direct here is such a blessing. Um, 
wanting to move into the directing side as someone who writes and produces, I, I want to create projects that raise awareness and uh, promote representation and inclusion. And so yeah. directing gives you that technical aspect. The writing gives you the ability to create projects. I think we have to be the change we want to see in the world. And I think that it's very important. This episode in particular, I get to really empower Jaden Ray, who plays my daughter on the yeah. show. And the kids get to step forward, but people get to see Jaden Ray in a new way. And my job is to mentor that next generation and to be that positive force for them to help them have a positive mm -hmm. life and enjoy what they do. Well, I'm telling you, Michael, it's such a pleasure um, to have someone like you in the world, to see you not only grow as a child star, because we know the perils that, you know, young child stars face, but to be this great role model as a person for your children and for the parents out there who have similar struggles. I commend it. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing Larry's story. And you have a friend in me and anything we can do to spread the word that these kids are not alone and their parents not alone, I'm here for you.